As a senior in high school, I participated in a speech contest sponsored by the Knights of Columbus. The subject was from Ephesians 5, a portion of which was our second reading today. Paul tells wives to be subject to their husbands in all things. Now even before collective consciousness foresaw the equality of the sexes, I instinctively knew there were problems with this passage. In fact, in my family, it was mostly the other way around. Nevertheless, I had to prepare a speech that could win the contest for my school. Unfortunately, I was successful. We gather to continue our spiritual mission of discerning who we are with God and who we need to become to participate in God's eternal life as our authentic selves. All three of today's readings help map our trip. First, we decide whom shall we serve? Shall we choose the incarnate divine who creates and sustains all that is and in whom we are one? Or do we select other gods apart from the divine presence? Wrath, self-interest, pleasure, manipulation, deceit, judgment, arrogance, personal supremacy, nationalism, fame, money, family, wealth, prosperity, career success, image, romance, safety and security, comfort, substances, sex, self, and sometimes even religion. Now, not all of these are evil in themselves, but they are when they are all-consuming or self-righteous and without love. When they are the focus of what we taste and see, and we do not grow beyond them, we turn from the good news that is the gospel of Jesus the Christ, the words of spirit and life, which are challenging and are offered to many, but chosen by few. We can only live the words of eternal life when we understand the mind and heart of Jesus. We all know that there is abundant polarity in the Catholic Church. Often we cannot rationally discuss issues that divide us, the role of women, immigration, Black Lives Matter, welcoming the gay community, who can receive communion, who can be ordained, who can marry, abortion, the climate, welfare, health care, vaccinations and masks, the Pope, sexual abuse and cover-ups by priests and bishops, proper piety, guns, war, peace, and gospel nonviolence, sexual morality, Vatican II, and almost anything else that is in religious discourse. It is hard. Authentic listening is rare. Understanding is even rarer. Either or thinking dominates our discourse. Either I am entirely right when we disagree, or you are. There's no other choice. It would be easier for people in power if one group were subjugated to another, as women have been to men for so much of human history. While pointing out the unity of the sexes, Paul is limited by the mores of his time, as we often are of our own. Now some believers want the faith to be static. It's easier for them. They can settle forever on what they believe at one specific time in spiritual development and never move beyond it. We can spiritually stagnate and let our faith become toxic. There is no gospel, no good news in such a life. The disciples considered the words of Jesus about eternal life hard, if not downright crazy. Before the passage of today's gospel reading, Jesus told them, whoever feeds on my bread will live forever. That'd be nice. But how, by eating that bread, do we gain eternal life? When we eat with others, like family, we share bread. We know we belong. We grow close. But when we eat the consecrated bread and drink from the consecrated cup, we not only grow closer to each other, we remember that we are one with each other in Christ as we again take his being into our own in the very bread we eat. Communion is the very fabric of our being. When you suffer, so do I. So does the incarnate God within us both. When I consider freedom to be my right to do whatever I want, regardless of consequences, 
Whether I intend to or not, I am separating myself from you. I am sinning. When self-interest takes precedence over the common good, when injustice exists anywhere, when we treat our earth as a disposable commodity, when we allow the law to take precedence over relationships, communion is delayed or thwarted. In a little while, we will pray for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Then we will pray for our daily bread. The two are the same. We will address our prayer to the incarnate with whom we are co-creators of spirit and life through baptism. Finally, we will pray for our worshiping community that we dare here on earth to bring about God's justice, peace, and love, what we call heaven, in this world, just as it is in the world beyond time. In doing so, we spiritually progress beyond time and taste eternity. That is precisely the good news that Jesus is. He is the bread of life. We receive him, we become him.